That's Points one, two, last three. Week. So basically, what happens is kind it of think of yourself loud as, compared as, to my as voice. This, you know, this is kind of a weird analogy, but we're going to go with it. Think of yourself as, as a, a famous boxer, right? You know, you, you're, you're this famous boxer from Spain, but he knows you, you're a champion, you come to America, nobody knows who you are. But you don't know the American boxing system, right? So, so what you do is you go and you take fights out in back alley, brawling fights and, and kind of these nightclubs where, you know, if you win the fight, you win 500 bucks a night and that's, that's what you make. So this is basically what I taught you to do, right? Like a champion can easily go take those fights all day long and, and, and make his $500. It doesn't mean he can step into the big leagues and make millions, but he's already a champion. He probably could do that, but he needs to, you know, learn the system first, right? So this, this is kind of what we learned last week. Like we talked about some very easy information to ascertain, right? So just, just a quick little go through here. We talked about very easy information to ascertain, right? We have these hold levels and they're very, very simple. This is about the easiest stuff we could ever learn on the charts, right? You have your levels in here, which were first touched. You know, if, if, if we look at the flow and the logic flow of how this happens, right? So this is going into data points, which we'll discuss in a bit. If you look at logic flow, you have data points, right? You already have a tested set of hold levels. Again, so let's stop it right there real quick. Let's talk about data points and what that means for a minute. So <clears throat> I want to be as clear as I can on this and make sure everybody understands a data point communicates something very specific. So what that means is that if we have a level or if we have a trend or anything actually on our chart, a data point is the theory that it communicates to us when that level is hit. So if we have a trend, for example, we can Rewind this back to here. This was, I believe, when I uploaded the what could possibly go wrong part three. We had this trend here. Okay. So the trend tells us that if it's breaking, it's going to try to, for example, create an accumulation cycle going up. Okay. Uh, I believe there was a 15 minute level here that had gotten, yeah, there was, so there's a 15 minute level that was holding this move. And then that was kind of the key factor. And then uh, it had trailed down to this 15 minute and so forth. So the trends data point would describe to us that it's trying to enter a cycle of some type accumulation cycle. Um, also, alternatively, on the other side, it would tell us that we are trying to hold the move down much like a hold level. OK, so when you go to this move and I believe it was something like in and around. I, I don't I don't remember the exact time, guys. I'm sorry. I wish I did that. Um, anyways, the I, I believe it was something to the assort of this. And we had drawn this trend and the point was to uh, try to get to this hold level, I believe it was. And so that hold level hit and the move moved down. So we can kind of use data points to dissect this. Okay, trend had never hard closed on probably anything that's more than a one minute time frame. It actually didn't even hard close a one minute time frame. So this is instantly telling you that if the trend can't break, regardless of the hold level that's being hit, this trend needed to break, okay? So if this doesn't break, if it doesn't hard close, instead a level is hit and it pulls back instantly, you know that this move is rejecting. Let's take this replayer tool, say like something like this. You can, you can instantly see that this move is rejecting. As soon as it loses this little interior trend, the move is done. But immediately, even before that had happened, a trend communicates to us that it's trying to enter a cycle of some type. Oh boy, my, my volume looks a little, little loud. Okay, that's better. The trend communicates that it's trying to enter a, a cycle of some type. It's telling us that if I break this, I'm going to try to continue to break up and ladder. So you can almost think of a trend as like, okay, the, the, the trend breaks at hard closes. It's now telling you that this side of the chart is going to try to ladder because it would be then making an accumulation cycle up to there or, or up to wherever it is. So to understand that a data point means that there's a very specific outcome that's going to happen if that data point ends up being true. So we just look at these things as trues or false. It's the best and easiest way to do it. Trend is here. Did it break true? Okay, it's going to ladder up and create an accumulation cycle. Did the trend break false? No, it's going to go back down and test the base of its range or the trend on the bottom or a level or whatever. What could hold the trend back? Possibly a level, 
right? So this exact same thing that you see happening on every single time frame, all the time. You have a trend, it goes right through trend, hits a level, the level holds it down, trend refuses to break. Those data points communicate something very specific. A hold level communicates a target. Target was hit, right? So that's the hold level's data point. That's what it's communicating. There's a hold level here, hold level is hit. Trend doesn't break. Very simple move to see, right? Can just go here, press play, and you can see it goes right to the base of its range, right? The alternate 15 minute trend. So this this was like super straightforward in a way. Well, actually in always it was super straightforward. You have a trend, trend doesn't break, rather it gets pulled back off 15 minute levels and it targets its bottom side 15 minute level. It was very, very straightforward. So if a trend doesn't break, remember what I said, the trend doesn't break, that's telling you that it's gonna go back to the base of its range. 15 minute hold level is what held it. 15 minute is what it goes after. Very, very straightforward. Uh, I wonder if this level hit too. Mm, not quite. And that's fine too. So we don't need to see what happened here. That's fine. Um, just to catch everybody up on data points, just, just so everybody understands, a data point communicates something very specific. So our job is to understand what these data points communicate against another tested set of hold levels. So if this is tested and this is tested, the next one down should theoretically collapse, which it does. And, and then so we're just left with some very easy trades. Like I said, the boxer kind of analogy where it's just like, okay, this, this stuff is easy. I've given you guys a way to make very easy trades, great profits, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. These levels here are about, about as easy as they come. So that's why we start where we do, right? At that point, you know, we talked about why this move was going to collapse. And, and, you know, if, if we do lose trend, right, this was that moment where we do, did, did lose trend, the move just completely collapses down. So, so we had adapted this trend, you know, at first. It... So imagine if you're in this move at this time and you lost this trend, right? Flip the chart upside down. Almost the same thing would have happened if you lost this trend here instead of holding it right? You can assume the move is going to be back up in this range somewhere, somewhere up here, just, just so we, we know the difference, right? Um, had this broken, it would have gapped up quite a bit. So, so this trend in this moment actually becomes polarity because there's no levels left. It was daily, which I believe was right here. You know, we can actually find the point that it actually was. First, it was right here, actually. I believe this was the weekly point, so very close to it. So, so, so at first we have the uh, the weekly point right here, which you can see over the course of the week. You know, you you remember back when we talked last week on Monday. Even you know Mondays, the tone of Monday was okay. We've closed this trend on the bottom side of it. In a few days, we could have a massive dump if we can't regain trend. So, so we already kind of knew the consequence, right? So this is all about data points. So this is why I'm going through this is you're, you'll understand when I uh, kind of get to the conclusion here. We understood what the data was telling us, right? Like these, these points of information are nothing but data on our screen. So we have to extrapolate the relevance of what that data is telling us. So, so if we look at a very basic example with our trend here, oh, we, we've actually wicked below the trend. We didn't knife catch the trend and it didn't move up like crazy. We actually moved below the trend. We back tested that trend to make sure the, the bottom side of it could hold. So fine, I'm gonna hard close adapt our trend out right now. So, so then you would be, come on, where's the point here? Then you'd be right here, like this. You lose trend here over on this side. So you can see when you lose trend, the move is gone. So, so you have the weekly, you've adapted it to the daily. So we already knew that the weekly trend was going to distribute us. We already knew that once we start adapting it to the daily. Looks very much like what we're in right now, by the way. Daily, the further we're adapting it, it's the weaker we're getting, right? K kind of almost the same thing as these hold levels, right? We start with a daily, we move down to a 12 or four hour, we move to an hour. By the time you get to an hourly hold, you're, you're very close to breaking the move, right? You're extremely close to breaking the move. Data points tell us how to understand the information that's happening in moves, right? So, so we kind of hard close these candles and then, and then you know, you could probably go to the moment where this thing loses trend, comes up, inverses off of this level. So, so if you kind of follow the trail of logic here, right? So you've got trend actually gets lost once again after it's been adapted. At this, 
So I think this is kind of what we just looked at, talking about trends and levels interacting together and having these moments where, let, let's catch this up to current exit replay tool. Um, ha having these moments where trends and levels interact with each other is, is the same thing you saw up here, right? You have a trend, tries to gain the trend, hits a level, rejects the trend, and uh, that can even be seen on the one minute. I think you see very much the same thing here, where you have a trend that's already threatened to lose on the larger time frame. The only difference here is that we're using 15 minute candles here, and uh, it had already had this crazy trend that was there. Right now, the trend we'd be working with would be like this. You can snap it to the four. The four is fine here. That's enough time. And then there would be something else out here, which uh, not not really relevant. The only the only other trend that I could see being relevant right now would be this one right here, which would be here. I'd have to walk through this. That's I don't really think it's important for right now. I think that would actually be a good exercise for you guys to do, find that trend. But this this is kind of the pitch of the move right now. At this point, I don't think it was adapted here. I believe we adapted it, you know, once it had garnished enough time through the trend, rides trend, loses trend, inverses the level, goes loses trend again, back tests it, and, and starts to fall right through. So, so you can see what the data is telling you. The, like the data is telling you, hey, look, even, even here, you didn't really hard close an hourly yet. But then you hard close this hourly, and, and after that, it just falls off, off a cliff, right? So, like the day you have to, you have to be able. To so that's something too important to note is time frames with data points. Even if we go back to here with this fifteen minute level, right? Even even if we were to go back to here, and this trend breaks, and this fifteen minute level has hit this uh, move and pulls back instantly, you you would definitely want to see something like this. Okay, you break trend, you have a pullback, and you, you start holding above trend. You can, you can even kind of go down below it, hit this hold level, and, and that's just kind of giving you the data you need to know to say that, okay, we're just creating like a little uptrend here. It's holding its range, and it's actually starting to close above. And, and the, really the important thing there is imagine if you had a trend like this. Okay? Imagine if you had, so it would be like this to this. Imagine if you had a trend like that right? This is kind of the same thing that happens. And you can start going to like a three minute time frame and say, Oh, look, there's a three minute hard close. And you can go to a five minute time frame and say, Okay, there's a five minute hard close, and it's holding a five minute level, right? Right there. And it's like, wow, it's holding a five minute level. And the five minute at hard close, what about a 15? Well, it didn't hard close any 15. So that's kind of where it ends. So the longer you create that space above these levels, realize that you are creating data there as well. And, and the data that you're creating is the fact that you're actually creating higher time frame hard closes. So that's really important to understand about this right here, this one blue candle, how it didn't hard close the hourly candle. This one does, and then it just creates its like final bleed before it loses the world, before it loses everything. Like I think this thing went down an insane amount. Of, I think this was the beginning of the move to... Uh, to 5k possibly or 3k or whatever it went to yeah 3k i believe this was the beginning of it but regardless that that was so so very critical right here in this moment and and when you move forward in the moment you actually didn't even have a one minute hard close so this was like instant rejection you you couldn't even regain this trend and hard close this trend so not only did you not even close a one minute candle on this maybe this happened at like 659 Right? Maybe this happened at 6.59. So a one minute candle actually could have potentially opened an hourly candle up there and it could have potentially opened a 15 minute hard close. So sometimes you get these kind of time confluences with your, your actual time of the day, not the, the, not like the, this time right here, not the actual like you, time of the day, not anything else. Because you could hard close this at 7.01, you'd need 59 more minutes to create an hourly candle. Or you could hard close it at 6.59 and be opening a new hourly candle. Is the difference between what could possibly be 61 minutes versus 119 minutes, <clears throat> right? So that, that the, it's not something I hinge on. I, I, I look at it in critical moments, but just be mindful that your, you know, your, your time of the day in which these things close, it can make a difference. Because again, if, if it was 644 in one minute, a 15 minute is going to open, 
right? So if it held, if, if at 644, it closes above trend and then holds for 15 more minutes, guess what? You've got a hard close 15, you're moving up. So that's really important to note about data points too, is that the amount of time that something holds somewhere can communicate a lot as well. That, that time factor in these charts where you really need to close over levels, like over, over top of this trend. And it doesn't matter if this 15 minute rejects it at this point. At this point, trend is what was important. And if you do start hard closing that, it's just a matter of, of time before you, uh, where's that, uh, see an example of that happening. It's just a matter of time before you, you ride a level and then you just completely break it down. Like here, you're riding a level. Looks what looks like the backside right here. Maybe a higher time frame. Maybe a 15 here. 15 minute backside here. So you're holding this 15 minute backside and it's riding that level before it goes through a major breakdown, I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, to extrapolate what the data is telling you and, and be able to read it as even if you were to move this trend here like this to here, you would see the moment it punctured through. Even if you were to hard close it to the hourly, you know, you went to the daily, you could go to the four hour, you could go to the hourly, you could keep going down in time frames until there's nothing left. I'm sure you went down to a, I'm, I'm sure what happened is you went down to an hourly rate here and then here and somewhere five minute and then a one minute. And then, you know, after one minute, it's just, there's nothing left to hold it. So, you know, if we go back and look at what had happened with Bitcoin over here, right? Let's talk about why Bitcoin rejected this level. Cause I know this has been a burning question in everybody's mind. Okay. So an easy way to see this, how can we talk about this, right? We're going to, we're going to do something here. What if we alt eyed the chart? What does this look like? This looks like the backside of a hold level, right? So, so we talked about front side hold levels versus backside hold levels. If it had hit this hold level right here, let's go right here or oops, let's use the drawing tool. We, we hit this hold level here or we hit this one right here. What's going to happen is we are looking more to hold these levels, right? We know the backside is going to be a level of strength. So it's going to bounce us like crazy. And we know the front side is going to be a level of greed. So, so if we were to hit these hold levels, so we're going to mark this one red. Okay. And we're going to go and take this and mark this as a four hour. So you've got, you know, a four hour, a four hour level, you have a daily level. And then maybe let's go to the hourly or the 15 minute and see where the next hold is. So you're kind of trailing down into what the, the, the possible hold levels could, could be, right? So then you have, yeah, there's not, okay, well, you've, you've got a clear value here, but let's see if this is maybe also a 15. Come on. Oh, trading view's frozen. Come on, trading view. Let me just click it a few times and it's going to go. I want to see if there's something a little higher. This, uh, this seems kind of high. If we go back to the daily, what does this look like? You're right there. Okay, you know what? That, that works. I'm sure there's, a, you know, the next level down still seems kind of off. Daily, next valley's right here. Let's just go with this. Whether it's right or wrong, let's just go with it, okay? So that's fine. So you have daily, four hour, and then your next down. Can we mark this as a one hour? Yeah, only if we do it here. Okay, we're just going to leave it and that's fine. Don't want to waste too much time looking for the exact level. Anyways, that's fine. So when, when we look at this level and, and we say, okay, you know, you, you've got the backside of a leg here, the, uh, the backside of a bounce, right? You've got the backside of a leg. Here, we'll get closer to this, see what happens here. So you do have the kind of the first bounce, the second bounce. So I think what I'm going to stop right here and uh, first thing I'm noticing right now, if I was looking at this chart, so I'm going to go through kind of these moments where I analyze what I would see on the screen. First thing I would notice is that, okay, we, we've got a trend and we've got a level holding. If the level breaks, it's going to gap to the next daily level or whatever level we're using here. I believe it was a daily. It's going to gap to the next daily, like the front side, which breaks trend. So you might almost want to skip up a moment in time to find the next spot where this could try to stabilize. So what I mean by that is that if we've got a trend, now I don't, I don't know how major this trend is. However, when we have a major trend, 
that has a hold level here. So we've seen a backside hold level on a daily. Okay, if this daily were to hold, great. If it were to break, we're probably losing trend. If that trend is going to gap it to the next level, which would be the daily front side, that would be the minimum point I think I would be looking at. I might even go up a time frame and say, okay, the weekly, because if this trend is too large, I don't think the daily losing a daily backside can hold the front side either. I think you would next be at a weekly backside. Third level gets hit. I wonder if it goes after a fourth level even here. Take a look at something real quick here. Uh, you have trend here, right? Trend from here to here. Of course, you'd uh, trail your distribution to distribution candles from here to here, from there to here, from there to here, from there to here, right? Lose a four hour trend, you may even have that guy to that guy right there. Perfect. What does it look like when you start to gap these down, right? So if you lose that four hour, backside's already tested, you could test the front side. If that front side breaks, you'd be looking at a daily backside, right? Daily backside right there. So if you go to this moment in time, can't really hold it, can it? It's amazing how that works when you skip through time frames like this, where you have a level that has to hold the front side four hour, but it's breaking trend. It's typically going to gap to the next moment in time, not the next level, which is where people don't really understand. You don't gap to level to level. You gap moments in time. You gap theory. You don't gap levels. So if this trend were to break, you'd go after the four hour front side. Well, the problem with the four hour front side is that it's a below trend. So you gap up in time frames. Does that make sense for people? To the backside daily, which is perfect. Had this trend, for example, been, I don't know, maybe even, where is this trend? Whoa, dude, this is an old school trend. Okay. Had this trend been, say, I don't know, oops, here instead? Well, I think this could support the move because, look, you're not, you're not losing any critical level by testing the four hour and the trend. So there's a major difference here, fundamentally, in why we see this move dump. Because once we lose this, we're gapped down to the four hour front side. Well, the problem with the four hour front side is if that level hits and holds, yeah, you're losing trend, which means you're gapping down to your next theory. Come on. I feel like my replayer tool is broken. It turned blue. Isn't replayer tool supposed to be red? Maybe it's because I'm inside of a replay already. Okay, doesn't matter. Go back to this moment in time. See if you can regain trend. No, you can't. You actually just move straight down, which creates the basis of the entirety of the next part of the move, right? So that, that's like a pretty pretty huge golden nugget that I've never really talked about. It's a little bit of a butterfly effect two cut type of thing. Um, but that's cool. It's, it's good to do some butterfly effect two stuff during this um, these moments. But, it, you know, you, it's, it's why we don't use a 12 hour. There's, there's reasons why we don't use a six hour and the 12 hour. And, you know, I do see in, in uh, chat sometimes people say, oh, well, it went after the six hour. Yeah, yeah, that, that's completely possible. Um, let's go to a six hour chart. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's completely possible that something bounces off a six hour level, but or or like a twelve hour level. Like where's uh you can find confluence if you look you look for it. Let's let's put it that way. Oh, here's a six hour hold. You know, for sure there is, dude. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, there's a tw there's, there's a tw twelve hour backside right here. Um, no, yes, it's front run the twelve hour backside. No, not really at all. Is it? Yeah, not really. Uh, 12 hour. Yeah, you, you can find confluence anywhere on charts, but that doesn't mean it's a level to use. And there's a very specific queue of levels to use for a very specific reason. So four hour, 12 hours, six hour, you know, only one of these belong, which is the four hour. So once you've lost this, right, and you've got a four hour level here, since this is already tested, your only untested piece is this. Well, the problem is it's, is it, it's, it's below the actual trend. So that trend will gap your level 
So it gaps theory. So moments and charts gap theory, not levels. You don't gap from back to front. You don't gap from trend to similar time frame. You move through to the next time frame. So you you do gap, but you gap theory, not levels. And that's why you guys see when you lose this trend, these levels were already tested, backsides tested, front side can't hold because of where trend is. So you just gap your moment to the next theory, which is the daily. And then if this one breaks, well, you're just gonna go to the weekly, which would be weekly backside right here, right? So, you know, um, yeah, lose this. I suppose you should go to the monthly, shouldn't you? Um, Interesting. Well, I guess we'll see, right? Let's continue on. But that's pretty, um, pretty, pretty critical information when you're when you're looking at these trades and uh, you know to see these big dumps and where they stop, like where to catch a knife on a move like that. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's all about understanding what lost the move so you can find the appropriate time frame thereafter. If you could understand that the four hour was lost, you could gap to the daily and find the daily backside, which would be the next point. If you couldn't find a daily backside, well, I suppose you'd have to look for a front side daily or a, a weekly backside, which the front side daily may not have a point that can hold the move either. Or two. You can see it going after the holds. Uh huh. But this trend is already created, you see? So it actually bounces off trend. So, so actually, if you were to just simply inverse this chart, we know what the data points will tell us, right? So, so you have data points. These data points are telling you exactly what's going on in the move, right? If the backside of the leg is going to continue to hold, it's just going to be about the greediest entry, right? Once, once you get to that part. Always understand the way the theory works, guys. Never, guys and girls, never look for the application to fit in the moment. Understand theory, the theory layer, not the application layer. Part of the move, that's the leg right here right? You, you, you've got the leg that's going to break the move, right? So, so you have these kind of getting stuck in the application layer will make you stuck in like blueprint butterfly effect one kind of level. Different set of holds on the backside of the leg. So, so if we know what's true about, and we can delete these levels now, that's fine. Just, just shows the example of, you know, going after the greedier level, the, uh, the back. And, and I'll just say to, to everybody in here, data points is one of the most profound pieces we use on our charts. So when we're talking about data points, it is a lifetime of understanding data points and how they work. Like it, it is not a simple task. It is not a simple one application kind of fits. Like a hold level is an application that we do, right? Like if you were to say, oh, where's the application layer of something where what I could apply? Yeah, sure, mark some 15 minute levels. Just, yeah, this, this you can't even delete this one. Oh, okay, you can't hard close that 15 minute, you're probably going to the next 15 minute, bang. Easy application, easy money, right? They have a very simple, straightforward part of the move. Um, if that doesn't hold, you, you know, you go down here or probably the uh, the next time frame down, the hour, I don't even know if we have an hourly here at this point. Um, you do, you need to hold this, it's already tested though, that's the problem. See, it's already tested, so it has to ladder there. Otherwise, it's gonna create a new low, which, which it does. So, um, you know, application is easy. Application is, so, you know, if you look at here, there's a backside of a one hour time frame backside, keep holding this and, you know, guess where you're gonna go. The application is also, you know, can be found here, it trails to here, you know, it trails to here, which is there. The application is easy to find, you know, look at 15 minute here or an hourly. I'm sure there's a 15 minute up in here somewhere. You, application layers, you know, oh, look at that 15, perfect. Uh, 15, perfect. Uh, 15 doesn't hit it. Backside, perfect. This is gonna be the dump, right? Like front side hold, front side hold, backside hold. We know what it means when backsides hold. It's just gonna be a strong reaction down, right? Um, you know, front side continues to hold, front side continues to hold. 15 minutes continuing to hold, right? Like we, we know, we know what, you know, application layer is not for data points. The application layer is just marking something. Application layer is, you know, right here, hold, hold level right here. Um, backside hold here actually is not a bad, it's not even this being tested. It's actually just backside, actually backside front side combo test here, backside tests here, front side tests here. That's fine. Then you have this one, it holds it up. Then you have this hold holds it up. And suppose if this can continue to hold the move, then you're going to continue to break up, right? It's application layers for hold levels and uh, trends are pretty, pretty easy application layer. The theory layer of understanding bigger moves is data points. That's, that's your larger moves, right? So be careful with application and theory layers because application layer is, is applicable for exacts. And, and I don't mean the data points aren't exacts. I'm, I'm what I mean by that 
is a whole level has a one communicator. Theory layers, their communicator changes throughout the course of the moments that are happening. As to where a hold level, a hold level is a hold level until it gets hit. Hey, this got hit. It's no longer a hold level. It's an application we put on our screen that's a one-use tool, right? Backside hold versus the leg of the move, right? The front side here being the leg, this gray level right here, sorry, the blue, being the leg of the move, this being the hold level that's going to protect it, right? If, if we were to break this down again, you know, you are going after this level right here. You are going after this break level so you can break the move and keep moving. If we can't break that move, what can hold us back, right? You have the backside. So pop quiz for you guys. What does this look like when you can't attack the break level? What does that look like? What is this thing doing when it can't attack that break level? It's a very straightforward answer. Yes, it's holding trend. That's not what we're talking about. What are the ladder? Exactly. Bingo. So if that's a ladder point, that means that this right here, ladder, bingo. That means though that this represents the move now, not this break level. This break is already laddered because that'll create a small time frame trend, right? That'll, that'll create an interior micro trend, which really won't be that important in this move. It may act as a stabilizer against this larger trend on larger time frames. Like you may go up and come down really fast, spike this ladder point, which is a trend from here to here, like spike that ladder point, touch that, move back over this trend, have one of these moments where you have a trend and uh, it's like this where it moves over, but then comes back down, right? And continues to respect trend. So, so just realize that this is telling you that this now represents the move. So that's your data point. So that's another example of a data point is a ladder point. And where the ladder point origin starts, that's what you're representing. So this is no longer the break level. This is now the ladder interior trend for the actual move itself. So this no longer becomes a break level. The theory of the move has fundamentally changed. What it represents and the data that it communicates has changed fundamentally when you ladder this move because now this represents the break of the move right here. Side of the lake here that holds you back. So, so we know that this data has a very specific logic to it, right? Backside is going to have a large bounce. Front side is going to have a greedier level that needs to hold over time, right? So, so we know that the data is telling us what it, you know, exactly what we're doing. So, so actually, if you simply just went and inverse this chart, you can, you can actually see the backside of lake very easily here. So, so when you look, when you're looking at this and saying like, oh, well, you know, why, what ensued this move, the rejection of the backside of this lake constantly and, and the greedier entry on the trend that happens, I guess it was on the hourly. Yeah. So, so the trend here was already created. You see that your trend was already created and it hits the, the kind of the perfect level, the greediest it could be. So kind of, you know, the holds of the move didn't work. The trend actually hit this level to perfection. And then, so we have the levels that we talked about before, right? Where, where you're kind of catching a falling knife. Okay. So this is where it becomes very interesting because now you've got data points. And again, data points, um, you know, just to explain this one more time, data points are the information that we extrapolate off of the pieces of the move. Again, first we learned how to just take this easy stuff. Like here, here's a data point. This is 7636. That's a data point from the past. This is telling us we should bounce off this level because of reason X, right? So fine, we do. And then, and then you have the other levels that we bounced off and we hit two or three levels in here. So that's a backside level. So this should be telling us that we're bouncing pretty hard. Like if this can hold the move, it should be a rather large move up, right? It should be a rather violent move up. If it's not, well, I think you can, I think it's safe to say that the backside would be failing if you didn't bounce off that in a pretty, pretty big, big way. You know, the next one, Remember, data points communicate things. And whenever it's trying to communicate, if, if it's trying to communicate a large bounce, if that large bounce fails, know that the level is failing. I believe it was an origin level here somewhere. Uh, it was something in here. Let's go to the four hour. I can find it. Trading views being no fun. So you have that there. And then maybe possibly something like this here. Don't want to waste too much time finding levels. And so fine, we're just going to go and hit that next level. Oh, we fell right through. Okay, so. Trend holds us up after we hit a backside hold level. Okay, so imagine you're trying to discern what these data points mean. Hit a backside hold level while also holding trend. This should be a pretty large bounce, right? Oh, you can take screenshots, man. That's cool. Um, just realize there's a visual embed code on your screenshot. So, you know, it's, it's directly tied to your account.
So if you take a screenshot, you're going to have a visual embed marker that you can't see. It's like a certain amount of gray and white pixels that you can't even see on your screen. It, uh, it blends with whatever colors are on the screen. So you're going to have a visual embed code. Like you may see weird pixelation in your screen or something that's unique to you and has an algorithm that ties it to your name. So just, you know, be careful with it because while well, you can take a screenshot, it's, you know, tied to your account and name. Um, so backside, hold level gets hit, trend gets held. This should be telling you that you have a rather large move coming in, right? You've held trend. You can't go down and test below this trend anymore. That moment is gone. So, so if you could imagine, you, you can't, you can't go and back test this level down here now and then all of a sudden start climbing back up because on the, you know, every, imagine it's like a, a bomb heist and the, you know, the, the, the bomb is set to go off in one hour and it's inside the vault. There's only a certain amount of time, like that, that clock is ticking, right? So when you're under this trend, the more time you're lingering around here, the more time frames you're confirming to break this move. So when you hit this backside, you should be having a hell of a bounce up, especially since you're holding trend. When you start to ladder this move off of even this hold level, it's not, it's not about this hold level being hit. It's about creating this ladder. What was being communicated to you by your data point is failing. We are trying to have a big bounce, hold this move in trend, have a big move up. If that can't happen, the later is true or the latter is true where the move has failed to do its intent, right? Back to here because it's- Can't see the mouse? Far. Hold on. And find it. The mouse should be on, it's on. Trading views being no fun. Ah, because I was, so yeah, that's fine. That there. Because I was tabbed out to the uh, algorithm. Maybe possibly something like this here. Uh, don't software, wanna, I shouldn't say algorithm. Don't I waste too much software. time finding levels. Okay, so what I was saying is that, you know, when this, this four hour backside bounces right here, I think you guys got the gist of it anyways. This is communicating to you, the data point is communicating that it needs to have a big bounce, especially since it's holding trend. When you see it laddering here like this, it's not about that hold level. That hold level has zero representation in this move. You need to be able to break this ladder point so that you can move up. When you start laddering down, imagine having a backside level hit like this, right? And it can't even break its local ladder point. You, you, you're, you're not able to hold these levels anymore because they're underneath trend. This was its moment to try to hold, right? A backside level is telling you that there's going to be a huge bounce. If, if that backside level can't take a huge bounce, the writing's on the wall. And you have a moment that's failing before it's failed. That was seen right here. The moment has failed before. It, it, and, and, and holding this hold level afterwards is even just more reason to know that this thing is breaking down. And so it's fine. actually We're very straightforward. When you have a backside level, it's telling you, hey, this is supposed to be a huge bounce. If a huge bounce doesn't ensue, then it's telling you the move is in failure. I'm going to go and hit that next level. Oh, we fell right through. Okay, so let's actually go back to here because it skipped too far ahead. Okay, so you know, finding the next next level not important for now. But anyways, we have the one level, and 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 this is what's happening right now, right? So so you create this right here. So you create your first trend like this, and it's going to have its own interior trend like this, right? So so you're going to have trends that are being compressed, for, you know, trend to trend to trend. This this form of compression, right? So this is going to be kind of interesting because we're going to be talking about some stuff in future of trading. So you have something like this. And, and what are the data points telling you so far? The data points telling you, okay, it's trying to hold the move. You're still falling into distribution. And until you hard close trend right there, until you hard close trend, you have something very specific happening. So, so this is something yeah, that you're going to be seeing in future of trading. This is your one, your two to find the three, right? So you can go to four hour level, see where this kind of valleys are which is a cycle, right? What you're seeing is potentially the beginning of a cycle. So, so you have to understand that these data points, you have two, two marquees here. You have either the inverse level, which is right here, right? You have inversion of the move here and you have the top of the move here. So the inverse level was already hit. So, so we can expect to go to the top of the level. If we do, we create our one, two, three, which is kind of the beginning of a cycle, right? You hit this level here. That's the one, the, the hold of the move. You break the trend, you go after an origin level to create a new trend, which gives you your three point, which sets up the breakout in the future, right? So this is how you would have seen cycle starting in a move. Like this is where you're gonna see accumulation happen. So, so we've already inversed that level. Let's see what happens next. We actually able, this, this trend doesn't exist yet. So, oh, this trend does exist. Sorry, this one doesn't exist anymore. So you're, you're trying to create a cycle here, right? Let's see what happens. 
You actually hit that level perfectly. So now you've started to create a cycle, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to take this. We're going to go with a very thin thickness. Uh, we're going to go here like this. Wherever this has its pullback is going to create our, our four break point, right? Like this, right? I'm sure this is the pullback here. Yep, that creates your four break point. So, so you've actually started to create a cycle already, right? So, so this was the one. So two things happening here, testing the higher time frame level, the four hour backside versus creating an interior cycle. So immediately you'd have to hold. There's only, there's only two points in this trade that can hold now to confirm a cycle, which would be this hold level right here. Make sure, yeah, you guys can see my mouse perfect. It would be this hold level right here, not hard closing or trend, right? That would be it. So if you are going to create a cycle here, it, it, it has to actually hold something in the move and not fail because it is still laddering off of this which started the move right like here you got a range here you've got a range here you've got a range here breaks the micro range of the move to see if it can stabilize trend because because this is where the uh the stem of the move is starting so that's your one your your first break move your one is the touch of the hold level your two is breaking the move your three is creating the breakout point for the future your origin level you can see here how it creates an origin level turn this up in thickness right we're going to keep adding thicker lines as time goes. What you're seeing in the moment is the creation of a cycle, right? So, so you know that as of yesterday, kind of the big moment in the charts is this level right here. This level right here is going to give you your breakout and you're going to start to confirm accumulation. So again, data points, it's all about extrapolating what it means, right? So let's just go walk through this again. We come back, we hit a hold level, right? We actually break the, the trend of the move right here. The inverse has already hit. So we are expecting this to just fail down. So in this moment, actually, we can look at this and let's rewind it a bit. We can leave all our levels. We can, we can rewind this and we can even look at the inverse levels now on, on smaller charts. Like, okay, that inverse the move there and you already have a wick above it. So maybe let's go to the 15 minutes. This had inverse the move here. Actually, it inverses it perfectly. It actually inverses the move perfectly. And you could even use the 15 minute value if you want a little more accuracy. It actually inverts the move perfectly. So it's actually still laddering down. There is no kind of easing off the gas pedal at this point because they're data points, right? They're telling you what's going to happen. They're telling you that, okay, this is going to inverse the move here. This comes down, it inverses the move there. It comes down, it inverses the move here. And it's just continuing to inverse this move all the way down, right? Like you're just not letting up. You're, you're constantly inversing a move until you come back and attack a valley. So, so these, like, again, the data points, this is just telling you it's still in failure until it ends up breaking a trend, right? So we can go and kind of work through this. It hits that again, pulls up. And I wonder if it's going to hit the valley here. It doesn't quite hit the valley. I'm almost wondering if it inversed off of a little micro time frame inside of here even. So we're going to take this one. Aha, inverses off the micro time frame. Still not quite there, right? We're still not quite there. We're still, oh, we're in failure. Right? He's still in this really, you know, unhealthy moment that, uh, hey, everything is in failure still. And, and so fine, you know, you end up holding the move this holds the move, this ladder's off the hold. Long enough, right? Pandora's boxing the move long enough to break that first trend, which we already have deleted on the chart. And it's, you know, at this point here where you're still attacking that trend, and you can see how over time it's, you know, touching the trend, rejecting, touching, rejecting, touching again. You know, now you're laddering up and hitting that same inverse. Now you've actually had one ladder up, you've hit the inverse. I don't actually wonder if you come back down now even test this, which looks like, okay, it already did. So it already came up, tested that level there. Um, I wonder if you actually even come down to here. Either way, you're still laddering up, right? So, so you can see how these points of data are giving you your information, right? At that point, you've, you've hit it again. Finally broken trend where you can take your move, right? You've finally broken trend and you can take your move, right? So, so we can just go back to the other time frame here. Step through a few candles and it gives you your origin point. Again, data points, right? What are they telling you? And, and this is what we need to now start understanding when it comes to holds and breaks. Because again, all I taught you guys last week was something very simple. It was just, hey, here's some pretty spooky levels and why they work, right? But now we're going to do that same thing on, on smaller timeframes. But we get the information versus understanding what the data is telling us. So, so now we can look at this and we can say, okay, now we have kind of this next point. So we have R1, which is the catch of the support from behind. The two, which is the break of the first trend, which creates R3, which is, uh, you know, one of these two trends. We'd have to break it down the time frame. It's probably this one here. Yeah, this is the hourly. So you can see how trend is compressing it, right? Against the hold level here. Again, if this holds through trend,
Video stopped? Weird. Test one, two, three, test one, two, three, everyone back. Test one, two, three, test one, two, three. I'll rewind it a few seconds. Good, weird. Hmm. Point. So we have our one, which is the catch of the support from behind, the two, which is the break of the first trend, which creates our three which is, uh, you know, one of these two trends, we'd have to break it down in time frames. It's probably this one here. Yeah, this is the hourly. So you can see how trend is compressing it, right? Against the whole level here. Again, if this holds through trend, now we, we've already started a cycle. So we can talk about this moment like, oh, okay. We've started a cycle. We've confirmed that we are going to hit support. We've broken a trend. We've created an origin level. So we've, we've actually done a lot of the work to create the tone of this move we've created an origin level, right? So we've created our origin level for the future. I'll spell it right, that'll help. We've created our origin level. What else have we done here? We have found support, support of the move. So we must ladder off this point, right? We must continue to ladder off of this point here. We've created our three, which is our first swing, which is going to create the four, which is the break of this trend here, which technically if this trend breaks, then we should be laddering up against that origin again. Right, so, so now we're creating the four and the five and eventually you're just going to create, oh, you've also created trend, right? So you have this, like this, hmm. trend. Is so it? you've created all this data on, on, on your screen because you've created this trend here, the, the base support to the distribution candle. So you've created trend. So, so you can see how you're creating these points of data that's telling you what's happening. And, and meanwhile, it's just kind of like, oh yeah, this is basic, it's a cycle. But the data points are showing you what's happening next. So, so now we have the story of what's happening. We have an origin level. We are trying to create a, an accumulation cycle. We are successfully doing so, right? As long as we hold the move. So let's see what happens. We still reject trend. We still reject trend. Adapt trend out, right? So we still haven't swung up, so we can adapt trend to here. And it might be, even be a smaller time frame trend. Like at this point, when you were trying to create, I think, I think it's, very, it's very obvious in one way what's happening. When you are trying to create this move, you've created your bottom side trend, which breaks and loses the move, inversing levels. That's fine. I think the key piece of information here is exactly what it looks like when you rewind this two before the move, where you lose a trend. Just take any, any random trend here, really. I don't like this trend, but we can use this one for now. That's fine. I'm actually going to, I have a suspicion that it's up here. So it's, it's kind of the same thing, right? Like, look, you, let's, let's rewind this move. Data points are something that you guys will be studying for a lifetime. Data points are not something that just click and go, right? Like these, these are not whole levels. These are very, very specific components. In, in any chart, right? We can just delete that. And we're going to delete anything that's not relevant. Reject the move, go after the 15. Attempt to continue to ladder the move up, right? So, so we know that's true. You have this 15 minute ladder point, which is holding the move. The problem is it can no longer hold the move, right? Because your trend is telling you that if you break that, you're going to be gapping down, right? So, so this is untested. Uh, yeah, okay, fine, it's untested. Now, whether this is the actual point of the move, it was something else, and that's fine. But when you lose this trend, I mean, as a minimum, you can expect to go here, as, as an absolute minimum. And you're, you're passing that point right now in this trade where you continue to hold this move. You can no longer hold this move because it's going to break this ladder point. Instead, you've got trend that's being held. So now you have to kind of be here, right? Move forward a few candles. You kind of have to hold this level now, don't you? you? You kind of have to continue to hold this. And if you can't, it's not like you're going to stop here. It's not like you're going to stop anywhere else in this move because you can see the data points are showing you that it's going to gap to the next moment. And that should be the hourly, which I believe is right there as well. So mm, the problem with the hourly is it's tested. So you either have above this 
which would be this continuing to hold because remember you've tested the level here you've laddered off that test and now you've got a level here that can continue to hold the move which also represents laddering off this so you kind of either hold here or you break down there is nothing really left is there ladder off of this or our tested ladder to here go somewhere like this where you can continue to ladder off the level and hold the move something like this question mark i don't even know what happened i you know something like this so the data points are telling you that like hey i don't know how close we get to this thing but i'm assumingly that's where you would be five percent i don't think you ever get this low do you What a 15 minute part of the move that would have to hold this would it not yeah it would which would ladder off of something back here can't hold that it's going to have a ladder off this i wonder if it actually goes after this level i don't think it goes out low does it no that was it right there it got pretty close and that's an imperfect science by the way that that's something that you could assume but not necessarily set along there maybe it's more so of a target in, instead of uh, an actual long right here you'd have to maybe use that as a short target like your greediest short target something like that but it's the data points are telling you that that's about to happen you know this was kind of a warning sign that this move might be breaking because because all of a sudden remember how i told you guys trend is accurate or a trend will will exist until that moment it goes straight so so even if it's right here even if trend is you know a small ladder off of it it can still exist and it will until you break the leg of the move. And, and here we break the leg of the move. So we actually broke our cycle. This is now gone, right? This origin level is still there. That's fine. This is no longer a three. There is actually uh, support is now here. So actually now we have to kind of move this to here, right? Now we have to make a new trend, a new three. We actually don't have any of that. What we have is just a single origin level, right? So then, you, you know, you come back again, same thing. You're finding lower and lower supports, right? So you're just, you're just laddering down off this move still. So what looked like it was a successful trend broke right here. So accumulation was dead in the water right here. When you actually broke your origin creation, which was attempting to create an accumulation cycle, you actually broke the move, right? So then actually at this point, it's not much further that this goes down. So, and then, and then you know, even if we want to take away Our all of this stuff there. here, so, so even if we were to just, dumb this down to, to, to kind of really be uh, simple here like this. Let's go like this, delete all that stuff. Weird to dumb this down to be, to, to be real simple here. You know what we could have saw in this move? We simply could have seen another data point tell us what's happening on the move, which is the inverse here. And I wonder if there's even a better inverse to go off of here. So let's walk through the trail of this. Okay, we don't need this level anymore. Okay, so you have this inverse here. That gets hit, it pulls the move back. So where's the leg of this move? That's how we would start by identifying this. Leg of the move. Well, okay, you can see the origin here. The inverse here gets hit perfectly fine. This is going to be pulled off of perfectly fine. And, and it happened and it actually falls a bit short. Just ladder off the inverse that already here. tested. There's a, or not, sorry, not origin. Inverse the one hour. Level. Doesn't look like there is. It looks like it was just front run a bit. You could say it's right here, or you know, you could you could assume it's one of these levels, but you know, in the moment here, I'm it was just the one hour in this. But I wasn't teaching that at that point to use the bodies of candles. This just wicks. I would simply look at this as here's the inverse level, and it doesn't hit, and it starts to pull back off of it, right? You know, if if it simply can't hold this part of the move, right here, if it simply can't hold this part of the move, you know, you're, you're, you're dead in the water. And, and, you know, where's the actual origin point is right there. So if it can't hold this, you're kind of, you know, dead in the water. You've got this front side leg, but you've already, you've already broken all of your points of data from, from before, right? Like you've created this, you've created the cycle of accumulation. You attempted to hold this move and, and, and it did attempt to go into accumulation. I think here where people will get a little muddied in the water is when we go down into time frames too linearly we start over justifying things you go down into micro time frames you're going to miss things that are happening 
on, on the larger time frame, like for example, four, four hour to four hour trend creation, right? Break this here, which didn't even it didn't even have its move up yet on the four hour. So you you would simply have this right here, right? Um, come on, hourly, hourly right there, one, two, three, right? So going too low in time frame sometimes can be a curse because you miss the larger reactions. The lower time frame you go, you miss the larger reactions of the data points that are higher above. Sort of been a good, good example of that. Could we have gotten crazy entry if it went to here? Uh, yeah, you missed the trade. You got front round. You front round the body of the move, right? Which was the wick, and you front round that to, I don't know, maybe 49, because you said, oh, 50 looks good. Oh, actually, it's right here. Sorry. Um, you could go like, oh, I went 48 or 49. Where's 48? Right there. And you would have just missed it by a few dollars. Happens all the time. When in reality, all you did was go after the greediest point on the time frame that was meaningful. Hour to hour trend, hourly hold level, right? So data points can sometimes get you muddied in the water. When you go too far down the line, you end up missing things. So there's, a, there's a very keen balance. I guess that would be the way to say it. A very specific balance that exists between using higher time frames where the time frames can't exist yet because there has, hasn't been enough time to develop to finding the strongest part of the moves data point wise versus going too too deep in the move right so th there's always that balance there which is you know comes with experience but I don't want to say it comes with there, there's a way to see it. it it's just not we're not there yet you could have went down into the five minute and said, well, this has to be tested. And you got a backside five minute here. So that's fine. You backside five minute, um, front side, 15 minute. You can go through all this kind of pool of things. And it's like, oh, well, I don't think it's going to hit the uh, front side five, but maybe it's going to hit the backside five. And also at the same time of hitting a backside five which could possibly be here maybe it's just going to go off to the wick of the move and it's going to get complete also testing the 15 minute while also testing the five minute backside so it's kind of fired on everything but then really the hourly starts the hourly stops it and uh oh, where is it here then then really the hourly stops it so so you, you can get it you can get into that you know point where you're just missing moves because you've gone too deep you know in in the move and yeah, I think that's pretty important to realize. Sometimes going too deep into a move, uh, well, you can miss things. What was this, like 4%? Oh, 5%. Oh, almost 6 Jeez, wow. Um, and this is a swing in the water. I don't even think this is really a relevant point to use, but just something to swing at in the water. in this moment it did it did attempt to create an accumulation cycle and it failed so the moment that we have right you, you you have this attempts to make a one it fails this attempts to make a one it succeeds because it breaks trend and actually does create an origin level so this is the moment where we're saying okay this is possibly creation of, of what could be accumulation if this gets broken remember what i told you about trends again we're just going to go through this one more time Remember what i told you about trends as long as you're not flatlining you're good you can even create a trend like this and it's good and that's the latter exactly point happened i think you created that first trend somewhere on the hourly candle here down to this point and it was still a trend that's fine it's it's still a trend but the next candle down it breaks the move so it's, it's almost like when when this gets touched this yellow line gets touched which is this right here you know, you could either see this as, oh, it's touching the whole level again, or you could see this as what it really was, was, oh, this is an accumulation cycle. So if we are going to break out of accumulation, we're going to do it off this whole level, which means we have to create a ladder. We have to ladder from here to the next point, which even if it's here, it's fine. It just makes it a long term trend that has a long time that it can build support to break this move, right? Like you can just see this fray out and, it, you know, it can ride this level all the way to the all the way out here. And, and, and that's fine. But the moment it breaks, what is that data telling you? It's telling you there's a failed cycle here. There's a failed accumulation cycle. So if that's true, then should you not just be looking for the inverse of the move, right? So there's no four hours. So, so what does the one hour look like? There's not even really a one hour. There, there is, and it's right here. That already gets hit. This is the untested one hour somewhere in here, right? And, and that's the ladder from 
you know, whatever point up here and it ladders to here and to here and then to here. And so your data points are telling you, right? They're, they're telling you, fine, I just marked the base of this candle, but it was actually a little higher. We know that it didn't quite get hit and that's fine. It, you know, got guess front run or maybe, you know, people are too spooked because they see the accumulation cycle break or, or for whatever reason it happens. And then we just fall off a cliff to right to the next level, right? We, we fall off a cliff right to our next level that can hold it. Looking for a life. I just let this play. It's just going to go to the next video. Forget about stocks, real estate, cryptocurrency. Or okay, take a small break. Will we learn how to identify the relevant time frame with the use of wick of the body. Uh, it changes on every move. There's not always one set answer. It's the one thing I try to teach you guys is that it's not always one set answer. You have to dig deeper and find out where the wick is appropriate and where the body's appropriate. There's not one cut and paste answer. If, if a hold level's being hit, like say an hourly hold level's being hit, or yeah, like right here, hourly hold level gets hit. It never goes back and tests that level. Well, I think you missed the move. Here you've got a backside. Backside continues to hold. So you may need to break a trend in order to break that level. Um, it's going to change on every single move. So when, when you're trying to identify which one to use, as I always tell people, it's just static answers. Don't do anything in, char in charting and trading. Hopefully understand how we see if you're about to gap a different time frame. Oh, maybe I misread this. I don't fully understand how we see if we were about to gap to a different time frame. Uh, if you lose a, a, a trend is when you'll gap to a different time frame. Like, for example, this trend right here that was created, when you, when you lose that trend, you're going to gap down. That's what, that's what trends do, right? earlier where you're discussing the breaking of the four hour trend targeting of the next untested four hour hold seems to be target similar to what you lose but breaking the trend between them gapping to a higher time frame level why wasn't the trend between the people to hold the move uh you were missing that you were losing the next trend so in this move in order to hold that next four hour you were already losing the other trend so if you were going to go hold this four hour in the, the moment of time that it happened, if you were to uh, rewind this to here, this was the four hour. So I'll make this yellow so it's nice and clear. I'll double check that too. I'm pretty sure this is the four hour that we marked. Four hour. You're already underneath trend. When the time comes, comes to try to hold that level. So you're already underneath trend. So, so the move is already lost anyways. And, you know, you, you could have hit this four hour and bounced up, but you're already under trend. So you're running a pretty big risk there and trying to buy that level. That's why it bleeds right through both. He is targeting the four hour. That's the next level that can stop it. But unfortunately, that's underneath trend. Yeah, full like 80, 80 something percent under trend. That, that's quite, that's quite a bit. That's quite a big difference. Hit this level, bounce up like a full... 0.8, so you'd have to bounce 1.6 minimum. Then you'd probably still likely go down, establish the move under trend, and still lose the move. So um, in, in that case, you were already under trend when you lost the move. How do we know which time frame hold level to use? Is it purely the closest untested? Nope, nope, it changes. It's all based on the move of the arc. Again, there's, there's no one static answer, guys. Like, you know, a lot of people want a one shape fits all answer. You're not going to get it. You're never going to get an answer that's use this X, use that. Rather understand the theory, why data points are so important. Understand the theory. And then you'll find your answers a lot easier.
had a lot of connection issues today. That's weird. It seems like uh, there's a few connection issues today. In this current move, you said you developed a one hour downtrend. And that makes sense to the one hour hold level hold to move down. Is that key information? Yep, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, that's key information. When you create that hold level, right? That I think more importantly is not saying a oh, one hour trend, one hour hold. I think more importantly in this move is, is seeing where the actual trend itself is. So if, if you were to go back to this move, right? Like if you were to go to say right here, and you start marking out all your levels, you can mark out this one to continue to hold the move, which you probably wouldn't use because it's above trend and you've already been shown that trend is established. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't really go for this because it's already above trend. Um, okay, well, we can still test the level. Not really, you're, you're actually going above. You know, I, I guess you, well, okay, let's see how, can't tell until we actually get there. At this point, could you? Yes. Um, is it worth the risk versus just taking a 15 minute? No, probably not. And then dissecting the uh, move even further down, um, seeing that even, even this is the final level right here on the five minute, which could be represent right here, which is the hold level here, but also test here, which is also this hold level. So anything, anything above this, I think is just going to miss the move, right? Like anything above this is going to miss the move. So if, if you're looking for a one hour hold level like here, I, I think that's a little, a little too high, to be honest. It's easy to say now because the move is done, but five minute front side might be more appropriate. Five minute back side, five minute front side, five minute front side hits everything. It also hits the final hold level here. It also hits the front side. The only thing it doesn't hit is the back side level. It also hits the 15 minute level, which can be right here. Or here, anywhere in that range. So this 47.1 hits every single level except the five minute backside. So you've got a choice here. Instead of looking at the hourly, I think, and, and again, you have to see if, if you were right here in the move, then sure, you could go after the hourly. Where's that hourly? Let's, let's mark that first. Okay, it's right there. Um, in that moment, it's fine because it's not breaking trend. You could go deeper in the move. You could hit this hourly. That's fine. You create trend, the hourly. Anything past this, you've tested that hourly, right? Anything past this, you'd, you'd, you'd be in these ranges somewhere and this would be the final moment. But you have to be careful with trend because you're going to get to a point in this move I don't know if does it even go back up and attack or is that was that it? That was it. You got to be careful at these higher levels, right? Like you can rule out a lot of this stuff just by time. Because you're not going to break this trend to, to reject another level. You're going to hit trend and you're going to fall the move down, right? Like you're not going to you're going to continue to ladder down. Oops, we want to keep that one there. So could you go after the 15? Yes. 15 backside get hit and hold? Yes. Hourly gets hit? Yes. You might have gotten too greedy going after the 15, even if you were saying 15 minutes is here, go greedy here. The hourly level holds it, which I believe was also the backside at that point, you know. You, 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 you have to be careful with trend. I guess that's the, the most important thing to realize here is we, you can't go after levels that are you know, breaking trends, but yet the level is going to pull it back and reject it. It kind of is like two opposites working against each other. So it's like putting two magnets together. They're just going to turn away, right? Like you can't break a trend and have a hold level hold you down, right? You have to have either both working in, in together, like what happened here, where a trend holds you down and stays intact and a level gets hit. That, that's working together. That's fine. But you can't break a trend, hold above a trend, hit a hold level and then dump. It doesn't work like that, right? I, I don't think it's, I think your trend is your dictator here, not your, like your, your trend is the controller to this trade, not, not your hourly hold level. The hourly hold level is a target and that's fine. It gets hit. You, you might've even been able to go all the way back up to trend here, to be honest with you. I don't think we ever hit trend again, do we? Well, that may be target for the future. I think, I think you always have to look at where your trend is. I, that's more important here. 
I don't, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit here and say, okay, hourly trend is created. Use the hourly hold. While that may be true sometimes, it's not going to be true every time. The level below the trend could have supported, helped it, regained it. Oof, a pretty big ask. And you've already broken the trend in the past. If you don't bounce off trend here. I think your uh, your move is pretty much done. You've already held trend. You've already soft broken in the past to go back and break it again. I don't know. I think that's pretty risky. Maybe if this hadn't already done this, sure. And broken the trend to regain it once. The fact that a front side level might mean you're expecting a bounce doing on a back side. So it'd be riskier because you wouldn't have a lot of time to regain it. Interested to hear what he says. Okay, wait, what? Level below the trend could have supported the trend and helped regain it. Just like the example in the video. Gotta go back to the original comment. Hold on a second, I gotta scroll up. Yeah, so the thing about that is that your trend is already broken. Like your your trend is already your trend has already been breaking on higher time frames to hold the move at that point your your next ladder point would be down here you know it's it's different when you're laddering like this to this to this which may not may not be done the move so so like you're continuing your your ladder point right like the next ladder point in this under trend would be something like this maybe that's that's way too far gone that's way too far gone You know, the difference here between these trends is that this still has a ladder point that's pretty close to being attacked. So can it ladder off of that? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, this gets tested. Creates a ladder point for the move, right? Come on, dude. Right here, creates a ladder point for the move. Right here, creates a ladder point, creates a ladder point. The next ladder point up here is pretty far away. So when you're breaking this trend down like this and uh, regaining trend, like what you guys are talking about right here, your ladder point is like down here. That that's that's way too far gone. It's way too far gone. Like if you were to say this is the ladder point, you just have to kind of stay a little bit above this, right? So if you were gonna set a buy, maybe it would be like I don't know, maybe a little bit above it, like right there. But like, look how. Oh, it actually did bounce off that perfectly. Look how look how far gone past trend that is. So something that could hold the move would be a ladder point. Yeah, it actually held perfectly. It was a 3% move. That's not bad. Then hits trend and doesn't, doesn't get trend back and then just fails its move, right? Because it can't regain trend. So if, if you're looking at this, maybe if it was closer to the ladder point, you can't even use this hold level here because it's already tested. So you have to use this front side because this back side's tested. So you have to use this front side. Uh, Maybe, maybe if that had happened with, without such a huge gap on the trend to the next level. But then really you're just kind of laddering off this, right? Like ladder from here to here, here. So next, maybe next it would be, like I said, like right here. Which is, you know, that's kind of what happens. Hopefully that helps. So that, that's the difference, is the ladder point is just so far gone downtrend. And it did bounce, and it was a crazy 3% move. I actually took 2% on this trade here. I was a little higher. I believe I was around here, and I exited around here. I made about 2% on this. I almost got liquidated. Yeah, it was right around here. It went down like 50% before it uh, went up, and I was around 2%, so I got around. I actually took this trade. It was somewhere in here. I almost got liquidated, or my, I should, should say my stop almost got triggered, and uh, it had bounced too fast. Didn't trigger the stop. 
How do we self scout to identify if we are really deriving a theory for moves or just stuck in the application pitfall? Practice experience. I mean, everything on the chart is always explainable. It's just whether or not you see it is, is another thing, right? And there's risks we take on buying everything in the, in the charts, right? Risks on levels. Like, this would have been a decent spot to take a trade if this didn't hit so close, right? Like, I think, at, you know, at that point, being so close to trend, you, you can expect it to just drop to the latter point. me the trend was lost it was lost it was a daily all the way back from 29k wrong trend wrong trend indeed um but maybe that's another trend that's on the chart 29k Let me take a look i just may not have it marked so the trend would be like this there no this is uh no this is just a kind of this this trend wouldn't be in play until now actually or possibly wherever we stabilize this trend wouldn't be in play yet can't be uh that can't be a usable trend yet I'd like to have a bigger reaction to regain the trend on the video example the hold is the backside hold is the backside over right here so this backside is tested this front side is tested We've got anything on the daily here at that point. We've got a front side daily right here. You'd have this. And this is already tested right there. Daily test the daily. You'd possibly have this. Nothing else there. And this is the daily backside down here. Background noise only talk. Yeah, kettles are upstairs trying to get their rest of their stuff there for the day. What am I missing with this question? I'd like to have a bigger reaction to regain the trend front side. This mean losing the trend possibly. I think you're talking about this part of the move, the current part right here. So backside you hit, right? Okay, so let's walk through this move. Let's get some of this stuff off the screen because I think we don't need this anymore. Uh, let's get current on the move. Backside, yeah, backside had a crazy bounce here. So I believe this is what you're talking about. Yeah, it's 10 per, that's crazy. Um, backside has a big bounce, right? And it's, it, okay, what's the second part of your question here? I'd like to have a bigger reaction to regain the trend. Yeah, so it's created its trend and now it has to regain this to create a cycle off of that backside. Um, you're more likely to go back and test this level again to ladder off this. If, if that's what you're you're looking for you're more likely to ladder off of this which can be holding this level over time which can still ladder over this which is great and we don't have a trend for the top yet the only trend we have is this hourly so this hourly has to break so let's get rid of some of this noise on the chart that one we need to keep so it's kind of like this right now right like Where does this trend come from? Let's make sure we have this correct here. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, I don't even know if that's a relevant trend. I, I, I probably wouldn't even use this, to be honest. I would more be looking to use this trend right now. I would have to go do, and do some work with this trend to see if it's relevant. If anything is relevant on this trend, it would be this. Right here. I don't even feel comfortable using that, though. Don't know how comfortable I would be using that right now. I would expect this to break, create the larger trend, and possibly hold the backside. There was a backside, it had a reaction, but yet failed. Which one are you guys talking about? Static in the background? Oh yeah, it's it's the kids. Wondering can be when we actually learn how to I dynamically identify which one is relevant. Um, you get pieces throughout, yeah. 
I think everybody's different when when they understand. I can I don't think there's one set answer for yes or no for that. I think everybody's different. That four up front side may have worked if only above or slightly below the trend. Yeah. Off breaking a trend shows early signs of weakness. It can. Like when you're when you're soft like when you're breaking a trend like that, like this, it's not that it shows weakness. It's just that the latter points, like imagine, okay, say this trend is in play, right? That's um a, a great a great uh recap on trend. So um, imagine this creates trend, okay? This breaks that trend. Imagine the amount if you were to ladder off of this. If this trend was relevant, which I don't think it is, but let's let's say it is. Imagine how much space you have to regain off of this ladder point, right? Hit the level, create a hold that can ladder the future right there, right? Off that same level. Imagine the amount of space you have to create. So when, when you soft break a trend like that, it creates such deep ladder points that it becomes pretty hard to regain trends. So when you do it on these legacy trends, it kind of becomes a tough thing to say, oh, let's ladder and just casually regain the move. It's like, oh, that might be 6% above price. That, that's, that's a really big ask. There might be a really good trade there, but you know, maybe understanding that it's like 1%, 2%, 2.5%, something like that is where like the smart trade exists. Because alternatively, you could just, you know, some kind of hold level and then just boom, right? It's just about how when, when a trend breaks, the ladder points that it creates become deeper and deeper and deeper as time goes on. I think that's a really important thing to realize. Thanks for going over that. Does that help? I, I, it's, boy, it's hard to read these questions and then know exactly. Because we talked about a few different parts, but I think, I think I helped answer that. I wanted to short that trend, but everything was lagging. And that was a was. <laughs> Didn't you take 44.7? 44.7. I'm not sure if you're talking to me, RP. I'm not sure if you're talking to me or somebody else. I have a final sum up for the race to spend strong, greedy hold level. Thanks. I'm doing that right now. I'm talking about the video where you reviewed, but it's all good. You went over it already and B. Okay. Daily backside of 42K. Can it be considered tested? It can still hold the move. Um, not really. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say this is tested. I would say you have a difference of two levels here, right here and here. I would say none of neither of those are tested. Explain the gapping theory. I've I've been doing it the whole time. I don't take that as an. I don't take that as an origin, not a valley. They'll have to just take everything into account when determining what's worth an entry. It's not just like trend is here, level is here, thus entry is here. Exactly, exactly. You can never, like the, the, the things change so fast in the charts. When, when people get into the habits of marking static information, it just makes them lose money. You're always having a change. Like what was a good level yesterday is not necessarily a good level today. Like, okay, for example, you can go to here to this four hour level. Could this ladder something? Uh, sure, it, it could ladder something. Um, you know, re rewind one day. Uh, rewind one day. Could this ladder the move? Yes, it can ladder the move. So then we get to this situation where we're like this. Boom, look at that. It's such a great entry. Oh my God, it has to keep laddering now. Can it continue to ladder? Well, this level can't hold the move anymore, right? Like what, what, what happened right here, Right from from this moment where this could technically ladder the move because it's a pretty decent hold level above this ladder point. So then you could say ladder from here to here to there, and it keeps moving up, and then that could potentially create an accumulation cycle. Right, all of a sudden it can't ladder the move. One event alters the entire course of what could happen on the charts. What could you? What could possibly ladder the move next? Okay, well you could be down here, so you've got a level between here and here. Well, what else could ladder the move? What do a daily? Is there anything else there? Oh, there's nothing really on a 
daily. There's a there's a break level on the daily that could ladder the move. Okay, what else do you have? Um, you've got this created a test which laddered from here to here, which could I suppose be a break level right here. So the break level, there a daily break. There's a daily break, so you kind of don't really want to test that. But I guess okay, we can mark that as well. These could ladder the next level. This one can't anymore. I can I can promise you that that one can't anymore. So you've got a four hour break level. You've got a daily break level. These could both technically ladder the move this no longer can because that would be breaking this ladder point it would be kind of closing micro time frame below trend right so then you could even do something like this which would be a little overkill to be honest and um you know well let's see what happens mm, nope can't really do anything, right? Um, we know this one can't do it. Uh, well, let's put that back and rewind this for a minute. Let's go to like a one minute time frame. Okay, hit your level. Are you going to close below trend? Now, trend is rejecting, so this isn't good. Well, we're hard closing under trend, and we've already broken this level anyways, which breaks this ladder point. So I think it's time to get out of the trade. <laughs> it's going to be pretty quick. It's a decision that's made pretty quick. So like, you know, this moment back here alters the course of what this can or cannot do, right? So that this is kind of like gone. And then I'm assuming you just, yeah, instant dump, right? Instant dump. So like, yeah, you, you, static information just leads to people getting ruined in these charts. There's lots of information we can use. Static information will destroy you. So you've got now a four hour break, daily break, a larger trend, a ladder point, backside hold. You've got a lot of stuff that can hold you here, right? Well, there's the four hour break level. That can ladder the move, does it? Well, it laddered, it hit the four hour break, created trend. Held above it. Now it's creating its own ladder. Can this hold and regain that trend? Which I don't even know if this trend is relevant anymore, by the way. This is not a relevant trend. So it's not even about regaining the trend. It's about breaking over top of this ladder point. Like things move so fast. And there it is. Like things, they move so fast in the charts that to use static information, you guys are just asking to get your accounts blown out like that. That's why data points are so important and not theory of where to mark these things. Understanding what they represent and, and using knowledge in our, our brain layer is so much more important than using a memory layer. Memory doesn't do anything for you in charting. Using the layer of memory is like application layers. That's, that's using application in charting. That does nothing except blow accounts out of the water. So that's a great, I'll put a hundred on that one for leg and Dax question or remark. That, that's a great remark because it's it's not about, you know, the memory layer. Oh, I remember there's a level here, so I should buy that. Oh, these things are changing by the minute almost. When we put all the theories together, it's all put together to confirm the holds, the breaks, the directions, BTC would be moving exactly. It, it all works together. I think that was a trade you made two to three percent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the trade I made two to three percent on. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in it for like a minute flat at forty four seven. Like when this had happened right here, the the, the big dump, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, forty four seven. Yeah, I I know what trade you're talking about. It's actually the last trade I took. I haven't been able to take any trades. Yeah, it went here. It bounced up like crazy, and then instantly dumped down. I, it was like a one minute trade. It was it was it was good. It was a good trade. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean now. I um, was an understanding, but you're talking about my trade. Yeah, yeah. That 44.7 hit perfectly, went up like 4% in 20 seconds and then down hard. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. It was, I took 2% off that trade. It was a great trade. Um, but, you know, when you, when you can make that kind of money, regardless of what happens, like, okay, say, say, you, say you were to catch that daily backside. Um, like I wouldn't be taking 11% here. The second I saw this thing move up like five, six percent, I'd be like smashing that. Well, I wouldn't smash the market button because you can't you can't market close and you do things like that. You can market close. You got to be careful because you can you can be in like perfectly right here, right? 
and then and then it could go up here and you could be like, oh, I'm at 6% market, 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 but the market price might be down here. So you, you actually might sell for like 1% when you could have just put a limit order like right here and it'll get crushed through. I, I would not have been in this for like the 10%. That's an insane move. Maybe I would have froze and been like, holy shit, what do I do? But no, I, I mean, I've done that before. I'm way past that. I, I would never, I like five, six percent in a move in one minute. It's like, I don't care where it goes. I've made my money yet. It's like one minute, 15 grand. I don't care. So yeah, I like, even, even if I was in this, I wouldn't, I, I, I see no value past making a daily income in this. If, if that's 5k a day, I see no value in trying to get anything above that other, other than the day is complete. Move on. That's the only value I take. So yeah, I was scrappy when that hit 2%. I was just like, yeah, whatever. 2%. Good. Perfect. I'm up. Scarpy. I was going scrappy. Damn, dude. Scarpy. So yeah, when that happened, it wasn't even a question about what can go on next. It's just the target is hit. I've, I've identified my daily goal and that's it. Like my daily goal is like five grand when I trade now. If, if on the days that I trade, which is like maybe one day a week, maybe. So that, that's something that I can't stress enough to people, um, especially in crypto markets. Like when you can hit a daily goal like that, you just hit it and walk away. We'll go through the second video soon. Yeah, there. like I apologized earlier, there's going to be a ton of background noise today. I just got a brand new mixer and um, a brand new mixer for the podcast and it's not set up yet at all. On to the next one. Yep, we'll go in a minute. Nice. <laughs> okay, Prem, I'll, I'll answer this and then we'll go to the next one. What it says. Last few hours, it seems like we are bouncing between one hour backside, both sides. So immediately without even looking at levels, what I would say is that you've started to create the definition of this move. Like you have your trend on the top that you know is going to hold the move down. That was confirmed right here when the one minute ripped over it, hit a 15 minute hold and then instantly pulled back down. So you've kind of in a way, even before this moment happened, like we can remove this. And even before this moment happened right here, you've, you've kind of in a way already put like a limiter on it, which would be, where is it right here? You've already put like a limiter on it. That's reducing over time. Like it's following trend. You've already put a limiter that has to stay above this level and below this trend. So as time goes on in a move, and this is something that's very important to realize, as time goes on in any one move in the charts, what happens is your profits become less and less and less and less. It's like this, massive profits, and then it goes medium profits, and then smaller profits, and then smallest profits before the next big move up. And then you get back into like a large, oops, then you get back into like a large profit part of the move where it's like, okay, you break this side, you get into large profits, and then it goes into you know, the really big reactions and it diminishes over time. It's always like these kind of pennants or flags or whatever you call them, because it's always just trends compressing into other trends, right? Or if you go down, like the big profits that are here from this to like the next you know, set of ranges or, or whatever it ends up being. So um, you are, you are going to hit stronger levels and create smaller moves over time. And even, you know, this goes like that. So then you know, now you actually have a trend that you can use because you've well, broken your ladder point so now you've got this right so so you you, you are going to get into like this this smaller reduction of moves so you asked if it was i think that's important to identify first like it's a it's a more 
it's a reduction. So you, you are going to see like, you know, the, the total amount that you could make be a lot lower. I see already seems like we're advancing between one hour backside on both sides. So one hour backside on both sides. That's this one right here is trying to break it. So that would be, this is tested already. This is tested. This is tested. So I don't even know if it's necessarily about bouncing between one hour backsides. This is just the, uh, the whole level that was hit here. So you're going to, you're going to try to create a ladder off of that to compress this move, right? Like you're going to even try to create like, um, Wrong, wrong data point collected <laughs> you're even going to try to create like a hold move like this right like even something more minuscule because once you once you break this then you may be getting back into testing trend so the, the kind of the gap here is between this and trend right so um got that there bubbles tested here backside is tested here so yeah you're just kind of compressing into this move right um could possibly go and test the ladder point here. Uh, I think we can't, we shouldn't use that anymore. The four hour trend. Uh, the four hour trends right now will be a little, little like, yeah, they're developed. Like this one is more developed because it's been in play for a longer period of time. Um, I, I guess you could use four hour. I think they're the same as the one hour points. They are so. I would just use the one hour trends here. I don't, I don't think you have, I mean, this, this could, I don't, I don't think it makes a difference. Um, they're the same trends. So like four hour trends, I, I don't think really matters here. I think the trend is the trend in this scenario. I don't really think it's important. You're talking about maybe like this to this. You're talking about something like that. Possibly, but I would think that's a little high, but it could hold it. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a little high. Um, it's it's still pretty early to use a four hour trend, to be honest. Like this one hour trend was just developed. Oops, this one hour trend was just developed. It is technically a four. I mean, it doesn't matter in either case here because the four hour trend is, is the same. Um, the only thing is if you use this trend or not. I wouldn't. I like to always get greedier. Could this hold the move? Yeah, it can. Maybe it can do something like this. Maybe it can hit these in the same moment here and, and hold the move. Uh, you know, it goes a little bit after the break of the move and hold it down. And this four hours already tested here. So that, that's it for four hours. Like this, this four hours tested. Yeah, maybe. Possibly, I suppose. I don't know how much I like it. I think I would rather see trend. Um, hold the move down. I think that's the greedier part of the trade that still confirms the movement down. Okay, let's get to uh, data points too. And, and I just want to stress, we are, we're taking extra time on data points today because of their importance. If, if we were to rank things in butterfly effect of difficulty, data points would be right at the top. It would be one of the two or three of the hardest. Uh, it would probably be one of the top two hardest things to master in trading in butterfly effect. The importance of data points and, and how these things are created and, and what it communicates to us i don't think there's a more important lesson in butterfly effect i think this is the most important lesson in butterfly effect if, if it's not the most important i'd have to look through the list to say okay well this is actually more important um at a fundamental basis i'll say this that at a fundamental basis this is the most important lesson in butterfly effect so it's really important that we just take this one and take our time on it because data data points are the onset of everything there's a reason why it's right at the start of, of butterfly effect it's learn hold levels start thinking about data points that's really the meat and potatoes because this is data points goes all the way from the basis of future of trading well beyond butterfly effect too until like the next course i'll do data points are everything so just conveying the importance of that i, I, I can't it, it, it's everything in charting i still use data points most of butterfly effect one stuff i'm not using data points would be one of the things i'm still using i'm using butterfly effect two and beyond uh, data points would be the one thing that I 
Well, there's a few things, but th this would be one of the most important ones for sure. So it's just really important to, to realize, everybody needs to realize how critical data points are. Going through this move again, now we know, like we talked about, so let's delete this and let's just take away some of these levels. We, we don't need this kind of junk in here. We don't even need this or this or, or, or this right now. What we need to do is look at this larger time frame. So we know that this is the. So before we move on, we're going to have everybody refresh so nobody gets cut out here. I'm going to start the stream back over again as well and uh, everybody refresh. Just going to give this uh, one minute here. I'm going to let everybody refresh and connect and it might take people a minute. So um, if anybody needs a bathroom break, this would be like the perfect time because now we're getting into the next lesson. So we'll, we'll take like a one minute break while everybody reconnects. Okay, I think that should give everybody enough time. So many refreshes. Yeah, it seems like there's some kind of uh, problem with the servers, maybe. It's not my servers, it's Vimeo servers. But I think that should be enough time. The front side of a lake. This is going to need time to hold. This is not going to be something that just sits here and bounces and rips off. Like, yeah, okay, like we talked about before we're going to have a reaction. Of course, we're going to have a reaction. It's a, it's a whole level, right? We're, we're going to have, you know, an instant reaction. So, so fine, we have a 9% reaction, we fall right back down. And then we have, you know, another 7 or 8% reaction and, and we fall down. And we're going to need to hold this level over time. This is not the level that it's just like, oh, we're going to rip right off and go up 20%, right? Even if you were to look at this mo moment up here at 10,500, it's the same thing, right? We're no longer holding the backsides of legs here. If we were holding the backside of a lake, it would be right here. And even this is tested, but it would be right here. But it's, it's not because it's already tested. You see, it's uh, actually, let's use a proper level here. Come on, we do this. This right here. You sure, it's level hit. It's not gonna have a major reaction because first off, it's already been tested, okay? The leg of this move was right here. It was already set to break. The problem is, the weekly never got hit. You see? So this is important right here. You've got a break level, and this is much of what we've been talking about. Extreme moments of polarity where you have such a strong level. Right? You can even find the weekly leg of the move here. Get rid of this. Hell, you could it bounce off this barely gets hit right like why couldn't you ladder off this in the future something like around here trend and that would be a nice duality because this is such a, a steep steep moment not sure what this is pinned to but i'm going to leave it because I'm, I'm assuming it's pinned to something important you know you could have the whole level here yeah it looks more like it's going to be the whole level because trend is there but what about even right here? Why couldn't you ladder off of this? So you could even go down to here at 37 and ladder off, right? Like that, that's a data point. If that's what happens, 
it's telling you that it's holding a ladder and creating a trend in the future. So that, so then, you know, you would, you would come out here and create that like this data point. Once again, it's, it's what the move communicates as more important. So when you're taking trades, sometimes it's worth it to go after these extreme moments. This was pretty extreme given the context of the move, right? Like that was pretty extreme. Context of the move is onset by the, oops, 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 oops. Context of this move is onset by the, Weekly hold level, right? It's pretty, pretty strong, pretty, pretty strong part of the move. Weekly hold level gets hit to perfection and uh, pulls it back. So could it go after the weekly ladder point? No, probably not. Um, and delete that one for now. Could it go after the weekly backside? Yeah, it, it definitely could. It definitely could go after the weekly backside here. If the weekly backside fails, could it go after what could it go after well there's no there's nothing left there um i think at that point you're just on on like daily fronts i think you would just be a trend to be honest i think you would just be a trend because that would be the next large event that would be superseding the 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 weekly here so when you hit this weekly you could go all the way down to here you could also go down to this moment right here you could also go down to trend these would all be moments of succession right like it's going to have to slowly test each one of these and if they can't hold obviously bitcoins in long-term distribution but like one of the key pieces of information here is that it, it the data point is telling you weekly break level to break the move no nope, just kidding we're not hitting that we're actually laddering so you so you'd have a trend that gets created from here to here that dictates the future or that at least gives you your trend in that moment kind of like what we had locally like it's almost the exact same move right so there are different points of this that will tell you how much the move is going up like if you were to start to ladder off this well i think it's pretty obvious that you could go all the way up to the uh, actual weekly level here where is the uh you know you got your weekly right there you've got the ladder point here like why couldn't you just simply go all the way up to here to this ladder point and then fail if if, if we start holding the move well that's what might happen we start holding this daily backside you might be creating a ladder right up to here but if that holds it down guess what you know it's it's what the data point is communicating to you in the future that's so so critical right so i i think that's the importance of that cannot be overlooked see so so whatever greedy level is in here whatever greedy inverse level is in here is what held that move down so it's almost like the same thing the greediest level in our case there was an origin that was at 10,000 I think it was right here on the 12 hour charts. I think it was right here is what it hit. That was where I had my shorts. Yep. And, and it hit this level and it's, um, you know, the point before the weekly, like if, if you go here, right like this, and you mark this weekly leg, where are the greediest points in this, in this chart? So you can even inverse this and say, well, go inside of here. If this is, the weekly part of the move, you've got something inside this count. I don't know if we can go back all the way to the hourly charts. It might be too far in time now, but we can try. This is the, the weekly. Where's the greediest level? The greediest levels are right here, which also is a origin. Come on, right here. So, so there's an origin. I know it's on the 12 hour. Might be this one right here. Might be that one right here. So you've got the greediest point versus the leg of the move, right? So when we come here, you just don't hit the leg of the move. And, and no matter how far off that trend is, it's still not hitting the break of the leg, right? So, so it's a kind of the same thing we're in right now. Like we're going to need time to hold this. This is the front side of a leg. We're going to have a bit of a reaction, but we need time to hold it because again, these are data points. So, so we really have to start to look at these hold and break levels. Like again, last week, all we did is we talked about, and we're going to walk through Bitcoin and what it's doing right now, actually to do like a live example. So, so we talked about, okay, data points and you know you've got this here and and this means the level is going to hold it's, it's the origin level right it's gonna it's gonna hold and bounce because it's the back side of a lake right i'm just just like if you flip the charts this was the back side of a lake here and this is a trick that i always do to help me sometimes clarify when i'm not quite sure what's happening i always flip my charts and start looking through back side and front sides of lake so last week we went through very easy simple examples now we drill down and extrapolate how we can make sense of this stuff in the moment because yeah you could go and theoretically make taking one or two trades a week and doing, doing the right leverage. But I want to teach you guys how to take these trades every single day. So we're expanding upon what we learned last week in, in this way.
we are expanding upon it in the way that I taught you guys the very easy stuff, almost like you're a Spanish boxer who's a champion. You come to America, again, you just have to, you don't know the rules, so you just have to make 500 bucks where you can uh, until you learn the system, right? The same idea, right? We have the exact same kind of ideology here. So we're going to start by marking our trends here. So we're going to, and then we're going to do trends next week in the uh, groups. So, so don't worry too much about, oh, I don't understand exactly what's happening with trends. We're going to do this next week. That's perfectly fine. And so we're going to work through these data points here. This one is a bit sharp, but actually that works because it's right there. That actually works perfectly fine. So now we have kind of these points of data. We have trends on trends on trends that need to break, right? Like we, we have all these trends and even right here, you would have had something like this. Even this would have had a moment where it needs to break, right? Let's see if we can get this a little clearer. Actually, it would be this candle right here to this candle right here, right? Accumulation to accumulation. So we got a five minute accumulation to accumulation, right? Hit your level, break your trend, fall against the inverse. Okay. So, so let's start talking about what this looks like. This looks like we're still moving down. We're not even attacking the valleys. It looks a lot we like what we have right here. now in our That charts. was broken. It's fine. So, so you create another. It's like the reaction right after here. a large dump. You see, you're just basically adapting this trend out. Like we can even uh, start to create a micro cycle, a micro accumulation cycle, right? So this would be the, the one, the two. It doesn't even hit an origin level. So it doesn't even have an origin level to create. So you, you're not even in the clear yet. You, you, and this is why you need that front side of a leg to hold over time because you need to go after these bigger levels. Like you're still just inversing this move. And, and I don't blame people because this is, you know, 8% or close to 9% in, in, in what? 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30 minutes and you've got 9%. Like that, that's ridiculous. That's 900% on 100X and the level was perfect. So, so it's like, man, look at the money in this thing. Of course, you're going to take 900% 30 minutes later. You'd be psycho not to. Who, who, who's holding out for another 1% or 2% just because? Like what, 11% versus 9% 30 minutes? You, you got to be crazy, right? So, so it's like, of course, this is still inversing. And then, and then, you know, you have this piece of the move here and, and maybe we drill down in time frames to uh, find the next point. And you have this right here, which is the next inverse of the move or this, or, you know, wherever that valley is here. I'm sure there's a valley in here somewhere. Yeah, right here. So, so here's the valley. This is easily just compression, right? Like local compression. That's protecting the move. And so you're still inversing the valley, right? So you can see we're still in distribution because the data points are telling us, hey, okay, we are distributing. So, so what are the data points on the other side telling us? So, so let's kind of just go right here and start to take a look. Okay, so let, let's pretend we're in this move. This breaks and fine, you have the next accumulation cycle, which is you know, gonna be something like this right here, it's trying to break, or possibly you can even start to use one of the uh, further ones out. You, know, you can start to use something like maybe there's a three minute accumulation to accumulation you know, here to there, the accumulation to accumulation. You can use this as the first break point. We're not even confirmed yet. We're not out of the woods yet, right? Like we're still trying to just create our first origin level, which I suppose will be this mark right here. And let's make sure, let's go through our time frames and see where the actual valley is. Okay, so you got the five minute there. Where's the 15 minute? Right there, perfect. That's nice. There's no hourly. Okay, so we know where our origin exists. So now we can create points of data with expectations. Okay, we know we need to get to this level. So everything. I think the important thing that I'm doing through this move is I'm creating expectations and, and data points, right? Like here, although this may not be relevant, um, well, actually that's wrong to say, it, it'll still be relevant. It may not be the most important thing. What you notice that I do in a lot of my stuff is I go and create the data that makes sense. Like, oh, this could be an origin for the future. So if we come back up to this and ladder off of this, that's a pretty important moment. And then maybe I can even say, Hey, well, is there a 15 minute origin? Can't be here. Mm. That breaks and hard closes can't be there. What about a five minute? Can, is, there, is, there, is there something of importance here? Nope, this laddered the move. Um, that has hard closes, can't be that. Does this one? Yes, it has a hard close there, so it can't be that. Really, there's nothing left in here, is there? Maybe a three minute or a one minute, but I think at that point you're getting a little too, you're, you're gonna have the same, same information. Ladder point there, ladder, ladder. This is all broken. Essentially right here, since there's no hard close, right there and it creates an origin point for the future, right? 
this would be pretty important to see for the future. That could be something, right? That actually, I'm gonna take these out. And oops, and hold the move down. Regardless, so like something that I do in a lot of my charts. Oh yeah, sure, I can collapse that. Yeah, for sure, dude. Um, is something that I do in a lot of my charts is is I mark the points of where something can ladder, right? Like this is the three minute here and you can see it's being respected. So that's that's an origin level for the future. We have a trend that could ladder the move off the bigger time frame. So when you say, oh, break level right here, well, what could ladder it? 236, so you wouldn't go for like 250, you'd front run 236, you wouldn't front run 250. Cause that can then ladder the move from here to here, there which is actually just front running the uh, origin point so if it goes a little above the origin point you know that it's breaking certain ladders if it goes a little bit below it then you know it's actually laddering the move off of the origin so what you're doing is you're using data to assess polarity you understand so you're using data points now on your charts to justify what the possibilities could be so again these data points like i mark a lot of stuff on my charts but where i take trades is another scenario like this is not something I'm taking a trade on. This is not something I'm shorting because this trend is holding. This could easily snap and it could easily break up, right? It's, it's, it's not something I'm stoutly saying, here's a, a trade, let's get into it right now, right? Like there is, you know, break this ladder point, ladder off the origin. That seems like a good moment of polarity. So always mark everything on your chart and, and we're gonna do that as kind of this week's assignment your guys' training work to get better. Mark everything on your chart that you can and start taking away the things that don't make sense of where a trade could possibly go. And you're going to use that statement. Where could a trade possibly go while still in failure? You're going to use that statement to anchor all the decisions you make. Where could it possibly go while still being in failure? And we're saying failure this week because we're looking at this side. We can also say, where could it go down here that it can still be in succession? So you can do it on the other side of the chart too. Like I've got this level marked and it's the daily backside. Well, it could technically go here and still be in succession. So that's pretty decent. Could I get liquidated if it went to the wick of this? Probably, let's take a look. Oh, trading view, please stop sucking. Yeah, 1%. So, so maybe if like 0.6 is the point where I'd get liquidated, maybe I'd wanna go something like this and I'd wanna say, okay, like 0.59 seems like perfect. And if I have one and that's 301, so maybe like 325. That means I can play this trade. I won't get liquidated. It could bounce. So now I've got a pretty okay spot, 325. That would allow me to be, maybe I just go a smidge lower, like 316, sure. And maybe I'll go a little lower. This gives me a point where we can enter this trade, not get liquidated here because if it bounces right down to the latter point here, it's like, oh man, I was right, but I got liquidated on 100X. Um, maybe I might take this and just say, okay, let's go like, I wanna I want be at like 311. 316 is fine. But if I take this, it can still ladder off this without liquidating. So like, where could it possibly go that I can still be in this trade and it can bounce like crazy? Where could it possibly go up here? So like, that's your guys' challenge for this week is to mark all the data on your charts and start looking at, okay, what are the possibilities? Like in this one, I think this is a pretty decent one here. Um, you've got the break of this valley. So if it rejects this break, it's gonna move down. If it's going to move down, it's probably going to do it off this origin level. So could it, could it front run the origin level a little bit? So maybe like a good trade would be like 224, something like this, 221. I mean, you're, you're, the amount of money you lose here if you're wrong is so minuscule because you get out. But if you're right, it becomes the like extreme moment of polarity. Like you, you could technically go all the way up here and ladder off this, but I think this origin level represents something that's already on the charts and something that needs to continue, continuously hold this down. And if you ladder below it, it's gonna be a move down because the data point is telling you, hey, I got an origin level. This is what has to break in the future to move up. If it goes above it, it doesn't matter where I take my trade. I'm going to get yoinked. Any shorts above this are, are, are really risky. But right below it becomes the kind of the final point that it could reject. So maybe you could front run this a little bit and say, hey, 
This represents the move breaking down long term. So I think that's a really, really smart way to learn and a really good strategy when we're in trade. So and, and then here's like another point where it's like, oh, I don't get liquidated can still ladder the move. It's like extreme polarity. Any, anything lower than this, you're just risking missing the move. And anything lower than this, you're just going to get liquidated anyway. So what's the point? What's the difference? If your stop loss is getting triggered even like right here, even if your stop loss gets triggered, come on, mouse. Even if your stop loss gets triggered right here, what's the point? Because anything below this in the move is pretty much gone anyways. So this, this kind of like a level in and around here, this is a little high. You could go a little lower, but you may risk missing the move, right? Uh, you, you may actually hit 500 and move up. So, so that's the other thing. You might miss it completely even being right here, but you might also get liquidated here. It goes down and then moves up. Like there's, there's a bit of a give and take there where you may miss the move. You pick, you pick either one and it's kind of like rolling the dice. I think just going a little lower in the trade reduces that risk down to the moves either failing or you're catching the greediest components of it. You also want to find a specific level there. Take that trade. Are you, pre, are you purely trading the theory? Purely trading the theory. The theory is the level. There are two places of polarity on both long and short. Absolutely. Local part of the move and the global. I would say there's the polarity points inside the ranges, and that's how I would say it. I love this explanation of how to take trades con, and of course relevant for us in the near future. It helps you guys understand that the data points will be the communicator of the trade. It's not even about finding good trades. It's about understanding what this communicates, which, which is what today is all about is data points. You have to realize that hitting this origin level, there, there's a very black and white difference between not hitting it and hitting it. As small of a price as this is, like what are we talking about here? Like 0.6? 0.4, less than I even thought, 0.4. There's a very small difference here between these two amounts of money. If you hit this, you're attempting to break it. The, the chain of events that could happen after hitting this are wide. You could hit it and reject. You could hit it and hold a level and move up and through it. You could hit it, go above it, pull back and move down. The less of the likely is this, but it's still likely. You could hit it, create a trend, go, try to break that trend, ladder off the move, and go down. The amount of events that could happen after hitting this level are large. It means that you hit this, and then the moves after, you analyze this. You're in post-analytics to see what's actually happening in the move. Versus being, I don't know, $15 lower. And if this hits, you know it, it fails to to create any of these post moments, right? Any of these post moments that could happen, the, the five or 10 different things that could happen after hitting this level. If you never hit that level to begin with, those moments cease to exist. And it means that you're just simply laddering down and you've created your next ladder point, right? So there, there's one outcome to this. There's about 10 to this. So given the choice of those two levels, it's like take this trade or don't take any trade because this has many different outcomes. You're almost better to see what the reaction after this level gets hit versus this. It's the same thing you would be in because this data point tells you something very specific. You're, you're laddering the move without hitting the origin. It means the origin level is no longer being hit. You're failing the move and you're creating a ladder point. It has a very specific meaning going forward. This one down here is, is very much the same thing, right? Like we have to go quite, quite a bit down. It's the same thing here. You could hit you could hit this, right? But the moments thereafter are undefined. You could hit this, you could move up, you could create a trend, that trend could break, you could go here, ladder the move here, move up, you could go straight down. As as your first trade in here, as the first trade, taking this doesn't guarantee you any kind of end result. Taking this, you know that once you lose this level, the move is gone. This has like a 1Q reaction. This has 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, it could create a trend. It can create local trends. It can have hold levels. It can try to stabilize, blah, 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 blah. It, it can go down and then it can, it can create an hourly level up here and then it could go up above it and then down and then ladder above it and then hold a level and then hold that range and then create another hold level and hold that. Like there's too much crap that can happen if you hit this level. It doesn't make for a smart trade. While it can be the trade, 
Sometimes when we're learning how to trade, it makes more sense to take the path of least resistance and just miss trades because like this has a one reaction bounce. It's, it's either going to stay above this and bounce up because it stays above this and you're still in the trade or it's just going to go below it and, 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 and the move is just gone anyways. And here you could be in a scenario where it goes to here, you're out of the trade and it rips up. You'll never get into that scenario here. Because the data point tells you something very specific. This still has a lot that can happen thereafter. So like your guys' job this week is to find and mark the data points and understand what they mean because those data points will help you the rest of your trading career. When you understand how data points communicate, it'll help you understand everything on the charts. Well, or at least at, at a minimum, it'll be the founding piece that allows you to understand the logic flow. post moments and failure even get there which trade trades to take data points is so eye-opening thank you this should be the most important part of today's lesson realizing the small difference between these two levels and the small difference between these two levels it should be a huge huge eye-opening moment for a lot of people because there's a very small difference in price and people would say oh my god it's you know seven percent or 7.4 or 7.5 but no there's a huge difference there it's not about it being you know, 7% less or, you know, 2 3% versus 3.3. It's the difference of what the data point communicates to give you safety in that trade going forward. Because that's everything is safety in the trade, right? I see melodic typing. I'll, uh, I'll read what he has to say and then we'll move on. Thing below this won't count we're still in distribution okay so so we can, we can walk through this now and we can start to look at this and say okay how are we going to get there we're going to start your brain just exploded i think that's a great way to measure trades and assess risk when we're talking about things like blueprint if you were to go the the layer deeper in blueprint and mixed butterfly effect with blueprint is to find because this this here what this represents is a moment of polarity like uh, this this represents polarity in the move and and polarity doesn't necessarily need to be um I would like to elaborate on this, so I will take a second to talk about this. Polarity doesn't have to be a level. Polarity, so pay attention to this. Polarity doesn't have to be a level. Polarity can also be a level that's never hit. So I'm going to type that in chat and pin it. Polarity doesn't have to be a level. It can instead be the moment where the level is never hit. I'm going to pin this for people. If polarity is never hit, that means that it's even more so in failure. Because if this level was polarity to create events for the future, if that level's never hit, it's already telling you that you can't reach that level and it has failed. So a level never hit or a level gotten very close to, like if you came all the way up to here, you broke trend and you went like this and down, this is polarity. A level never hit is polarity. A level hit can also be polarity, but a level never hit is like polarity on, on steroids. It's like 10 times amplified. So realize that people look for polarity in the charts to find the perfect 100x trades. Polarity can be, and typically is, the moments never hit because they're front run deeper moments in the charts that you're expecting to hit them. And if you don't, the attack of them, like you break this trend, this trend is telling you that you're going after the origin level. If you break this trend and it's telling you I'm going after the origin and that origin never hits, oh boy, you got a problem. You, you, you're, you're, you're getting rocked. But then it can also get into multiple layers of polarity where you're, you know, you're supposed to hit this level and you don't, so you hit this level. So that means you're going down, but then you hold a backside hold level, which means the failure of polarity failed, which is even a more accelerated move up. And that's sometimes how you get into these, you know, 10 and 20 and 30% instant, like fast bangers where it's like 10%, it snapped and it just ripped up out of its mind. Like everybody's seen that. It's like where polarity fails into polarity. Into pol it's just this like ongoing chain of, of expected events that reverse. Start breaking cycles to get there. So, so, so how would we get there from here? We would 
hold this level. It's the greediest level. It creates a ladder. Great. This is perfect. We create a ladder from here to here. This is going to create our trend. So, so we're starting, we're starting the accumulation cycle once, which is like a rip in the other direction. It's like like polar polarity. Looking okay. It's a good start. And then, and then if this is going to continue laddering, it can't break below trend and it needs to go to kind of the next greediest point, which would be right here. I guess it could possibly be right here too. One of these two, I'm sure there's uh, maybe a three minute hold level here. Should be this, so it's inside of this candle right here. So what's the greediest level inside of this candle is right here. So kind of needs to hold this level. Oh, nice, it's holding the level. So we know that this is also inversed right here. So the move is continuously inversing. We're trying to create an uptrend. So, so we're kind of in this moment right now where if you want to get into a long, it's kind of silly because it doesn't really make sense. You're still falling back against the move. And, and we really need to hold this move again. We really don't want to keep falling down. again. okay, so here's like a, a moment that just sucks because it's like, okay, trend is broken. We haven't created an accumulation cycle. The only good thing is here, now here's something very interesting. We attempted to create an origin level here. We weren't able to, so we haven't attempted that yet. So we actually haven't broken the relevant trend, which is this. So we actually can start right here. And if we break this trend and attack this level, we can maybe, uh, uh, sorry, this level right here, we can maybe create that origin level. But you see, it's the data points that are telling you this story because the data points are telling you what's happening next, right? This will confirm a ladder. If that is true, it will create a trend. If it creates a trend and that's true, it will attempt to create an origin level, to create an accumulation cycle. So all things true, if this inverses and holds the move down, we know that it can't, it's the early signs of failure, okay? All of a sudden, this doesn't hold, it breaks trend, this is all gone. It's, it's basically all gone, right? Data points are telling you that the whole thing is now kind of kaput. So, so we can, you know, the only good thing here is we actually didn't create the origin level like we did in the past, right? That's the only kind of saving grace. So, so now we can try to create our new trend. So, so we can create, you know, our base here and see if it can hold this level here to create our first trend, hopefully break us out of this silly little thing we got here. And it actually does. So, so that's good. Let's see where the swings happen to. Hits this inverse again, breaks over it, good. Hits that next inverse. Okay, are we able to have a pullback and hold the level? So, so now what we'd be looking at is we'd be going into the higher time frame that we say, okay, we've, we've got a pullback about to happen. Let's see. We have the back side of a lake here and we have the front side of a lake here. Maybe we can break this down into time frames to find it. Yeah, right here. That's kind of already been tested, but I guess it would still create you know, even if it came down to this point out here, it would still create our trend. So we got the backside and we got the front side. We also have a potential for it to bounce here, but it's not important which level it bounces off of yet. What's important is the data that it's creating for us. So for example, again, data points, right? Backside of the lake should have a relatively decent bounce, right? Front side of the lake here, which is, yeah, I would consider this the front side of the lake. It's not inside this hemisphere of it. It's going to go here, which is going to create our trend. This is also a good thing in order to try to attempt to hit this level, even if it hits, comes down here to this point where we have it crossing and then, okay, fine, it goes here. It's still creating our trend, right? So, so you're trying to create a cycle and, and where, where that's being fueled is it's being fueled from the break of this move. It's trying to create the three, which is going to try to create the origin level here, which is attempting the very early signs of an accumulation cycle. So again, data points, right? They're, they're magic, right? Uh, so fine. We try to hold this backside level. There's no bounce. If there's no bounce, there's, you know, this thing will probably just fail right back down. So fine, you have another inverse here now. Hunky Dory, and this one is gone, so we don't need that one. We're already above that. We're already testing this to try to see if we can go after this valley right here. Yeah, we get stopped at our inverse. Okay, let's see if it continues to stop us. Moves up. Still falling short of that other inverse right now. We've got that second test of this inverse. So this is gone. We've tested this inverse once again, and now we are trying to hold this backside of the lake, right? Okay, now we're at the backside of the lake here. Okay, let's see what happens our first part of this move. What's going to happen? This will inverse us, right? If this doesn't inverse us, guess what's going to inverse us? This one right here. If these fail, right, these are telling you failure. That's what the data points represent. They represent failure in the move at the moment, right? So it's pulling back. We don't have trend yet. You know, we possibly do have trend right here. So, so we actually do have our trend right here. We do have trend right here. You, you actually lost trend. So you are going to pull back. So you can see where, you know, in this moment here, we can kind of just get rid of this. 
can see where this is trying to use the creation of trend to cycle the move up against the backside of the leg. And once you lose it, you know, these are only one minute candles. So, so take it with a grain of salt that, you know, you still haven't hard closed on a higher time frame. Once you hard close on a higher time frame, which is looking like that candle right there, you have your pullback, right? Cause you, you haven't hard closed yet. So, you know, one minute time frames with a grain of salt. And then we go after the front side of the leg, almost, almost like magic, right? So, so now we've actually created this now. So, okay, fine. We have our, our first point and we are, you know, I don't, I wouldn't call this a cycle yet because we haven't hit an origin level. So, so, you know, I would just simply take this and adapt it to here, to this point here. So, so we are still falling against this trend, trying to create our first origin point and, and we're still falling back. So this didn't hold and you can see why backside of the leg should have a good bounce. The inverse holds it back so we can delete this. Here's the front side of our leg and, you know, possibly we're going to go after an even greedier level. Oh, so we actually just broke trend. Nice. So, so, so we did actually create trend off of this. So, so now what we are trying to do is we're going to use this and we are going to try to actually create an origin level, which again, back in that same cycle of, of trying to, okay, we've just created an origin level. This is good. We've created the one, two, three. Here's the next point, the four. So then the next is going to go like this. It's going to, it's going to come and it's going to hit this level and then it's going to pull back. And what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, that, that's the creation of the three, which is origin has been created. And this will be the break of the four. And it will hopefully use this trend to break this. And that will be the four. And then it will create like a five. And then hopefully that will be the five right there. And then it will create the six. And then maybe this breaks over and confirms. And then we move up. Maybe. Okay. This is very short time frame. I don't know how, you know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we end up just inversing right back to here. Maybe, maybe this is just a move to right here. But anyways, the data points will show you what's happening in the move. And just like magic right now, we should technically be moving up, right? Because we are starting to create an accumulation cycle. Well, look what's happened when you broke this trend, right? Because now you're trying to create an accumulation cycle. So now you're actually moving up. So you can see now how reading these data points, like this is the exact same thing we did last week. We just did it on the very easiest levels because now we're talking about three and five minute candles and needing to see bigger pieces of information. Like we've already been doing cycles. We've already been looking at this. The only difference is, hey, guess where your cycle is? It's right here. Guess where your bigger cycle is? It's right here. So we were already doing this stuff, talking about trends and these backside hold levels and things like that. But now we've got to step it up and get into the professional league where we're no longer just, yeah, okay, fine. You can have a career just trading these easy levels and you're going to have bounces. And now it makes sense as to why you do. Like you have bounces off holds that are one in three minutes. Why wouldn't you have a bounce off a hold level that's an origin 12 hour level or an origin four hour level that's untested? It would be almost unrealistic to not expect a bounce at that point, right? So you have these bigger levels and they are going to have those reaction points like this because of that reason. But again, it's all data, man. It's all just what is being extrapolated to us and communicated on the charts, almost as if we can read minds. This data will tell us exactly what's happening. So, so this is what I call data points because these points of data will always tell you the next step. And like I told you last week, we can always see one step ahead in the future. We just can't see two. So we can always see what's going to happen next. Like if we break this trend, we know we're going to eat. That's a pretty important thing to remember too. Uh, always one, one step in the future. Never, never work two steps because we don't know where ladder points are created. We don't know where polarity is created until the moment of either go to this inverse and, and, and it completely pull back or we are going to go to here. So we know once we break this, we have a minimum requiem of this. So, so we know this is true and it is, it is exactly one-to-one -one. is what is supposed to happen as what, as to what we know is exactly what's supposed to happen. We just can't see what's going to happen here, which is two steps in the future. We just don't know if it's going here or we don't know if it's going back to trend here, two steps in the future, but we can use our data points to give us the exact story to show us where the moves are happening so that we can be prepared to take the appropriate moves, right? So this is nice to see Bitcoin moving up here. Hopefully it's not just going to stop at, you know, whatever other little inverses here. Let me check. Yeah, hopefully it just doesn't stop right here or something, something silly. And it's just like really greedy entry, but I could, you know, not, you know, start clapping my hands yet because there's still like, I wouldn't be entering this trade now. I would have been entering it on trend break over here or on the hold level here. So you can see why I would have been entering back here, front side of the lake. It's going to try to hold through the trend, right? Same thing it always does. Backside of the leg holds through trend. Now it's moving up. Front side of the leg is going to give you that. The backside of the leg is going to give you an instant bounce almost to the inverse, right? So different with respect to time frames. A one minute chart is only going to have enough juice to give it a one minute reaction. If you're, if you're hitting an origin 12 hour level from five months ago, well, of course you're going to have a larger reaction. If you're hitting, you know, the backside of a one minute candle that was created an hour and a half ago, well, the reaction is going to be appropriate, right? So this is, you know, again, the data points and, and exactly what it's doing. So, so it actually looks like it's going to create the origin level here. And let's see, this is, this is really nice to see 
live in the moment. 